Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today you join me in my office, it's about half past three, and outside we have got another part exchange card to have a look at. On the surface it sounds quite good, it's a Volkswagen Touareg, it's on about 150,000 miles I think, and we gave £2,000 for it. It does have a bit of a short MOT though, so we are going to have to sort that definitely. Uh, I have driven it, there's a few things that we're going to have to address as well, so I thought I'd bring you along with me while I check it out, try and make a list of things that we need to sort out, and we'll see how this thing turns out. Right, I've got our V5. There is more paperwork, I think, and our two keys. I'm going to have to move this, I think, to show you around it. So, yeah, let me pull it out, and then we'll see what we've got. Right, here it is, our 2007 Volkswagen Touareg, Touareg, however you call it. Uh, it's in black, black alloy wheels, so I don't know if they were originally black or not. Um, this side doesn't look too bad, it looks reasonably clean, but that's because Macaulay started going at this with a jet wash before I had a chance to kind of show you all just what sort of condition it really was in. So as we go around the passenger side, you can see it is well overdue a clean and it is going to be quite satisfying to clean it so i did run out there and say don't clean it anymore because you know i want the viewers to enjoy the satisfaction of god look at it caked on seeing it get cleaned now this car we took in part exchange against the very nice range rover sport that we had in stock the twenty-five thousand pound one um so definitely a nice big upgrade for them they're sort of agricultural type people farm types so uh, you can understand why this one you know is a bit dirty and probably doesn't get cleaned all that much um, it's not actually that bad on the inside but we'll walk around and we'll sort of take everything in as much as we can because sometimes you don't get to see the bodywork quite that well obviously considering it's covered in dirt but I'll show you what I can so got a weird thing going on with the arch liner trim there scuff on the alloy wheels which is fairly substantial We've got a Nexon with a decent amount of tread on there. You can see the wear bar there. You can see we've got plenty on there. Bodywork actually looks all right. Um, bit of a weird fitment thing going on there. Seems to fit. I think the doors done a little bit something twisted. It's a bit weird, but I'm not quite sure what that's caused that. Rear wheel, very dirty. Can't really see that it's curved much, but would be very hard to tell. Again, it's another Nexon with a decent amount of tread on it. Come around the back, obviously we've got privacy glass, which is quite a nice feature to have, twin exhaust type thing. We've got our parking sensors. There is a cutout here for a tow bar, which would have been a benefit for this thing if it had a detachable tow bar, but I don't think it does, sadly. Um, come around this side, there's nothing notable on the bodywork that seems bad. Um, we might find some scratches and things once we clean it off, but currently can't see anything there. What I can see though is we're missing our center cap and we've got sort of a leak of grease or whatever coming from I guess the wheel bearing. Now is, has that got hot? Is that why that's popped off and it's sort of seeped out? Don't know we have to look into that but we're definitely going to need some center caps if we're going to clean this up and you know make it look better and definitely give it a serious clean in here and get the massive arch holes. Arch holes? You massive arch hole we're going to have to uh, clean that out properly. Interestingly, this door doesn't fit that well either. So is that a Touareg thing? Is that is that what they're like? You've got these absolute bin lids of wing mirrors, or someone will, someone will get kind of pedantic in the comments and say, it's a door mirror, not a wing mirror because it's on the door. You know what we're saying. Um, didn't check what tire that was. We got a Rodex. RX motion on there, loads of tread. What have we got here? We've got an, another Nexon. So we've got three Nexons and one Rodex, and that's the one that's missing. The, so I wonder if there's a spare wheel in the boot and it's been swapped around or something. I don't know, we'll check that in a minute. So another Nexon here, but they're all good amount of tread on them anyway. Come around the front, it all looks okay. I think for a clean, this is going to look a hundred times better. It's quite an imposing car, it is massive. Um, they do sit obviously quite high, they've got huge arch gaps, those massive arch holes I was talking about just then. A bit manky in here, you can see that's broken where they've hit something, then it's filled out with water and made like a soup in there. 
that's not very nice. So let's have a look inside. We've got two of these very standard looking Volkswagen keys and all the central locking does seem to work. Inside we got leather interior looking a bit worn there but you know for 150,000 miles or maybe just over what is it 157.61 so nearly 151,000 miles it doesn't look too bad at all. Yes it's a bit grimy um, would definitely benefit from a good valet but it's not gonna take too much cleanup. It's really not that bad, is it? It's just hasn't had a recent clean, I would say. Got a steering wheel that looks pretty much identical to the ones you find in a Phaeton. Loads of room in the back. Oh, we have got TVs. I forgot about the fact that it's got aftermarket TVs in the headrests. I wonder if they work. I wonder if we have got a DVD player anywhere. Oh, cup holders still work in the rear center armrest. Oh God, I don't want to latch back in there. There we go. All right, do these lift up? Are we gonna find a DVD player under here? Mm, definitely wants a good clean under here. We've got an Allen key and child smeg and a stitch ring. I'll save that for Sophie because she likes to think that she is stitch. And she is, you know, like hyperactive and annoying. <laughs> she makes that stupid voice all the time. Fun fact for you, a little insight into my home life. Is there a DVD player under this side? Uh, no, but there's 40p. And... Uh, Acorn or something. Uh, ooh, whatever that is. Um, we got 40p, so it now only owes us 1,999 pounds and... 60 pence, if my maths is correct. Put that in there for safekeeping along with my stitch ring. Um, what have we got in the center armrest? I seem to remember that opens up where they store the crumbs and it should, pressing that one should open like this top box, but it won't. That does, in there obviously is a storage section, but it does not want to open at all. I'll tell you the first thing I noticed when I first got in this car to drive it and check it out, I'll try and demonstrate now, is you would get in, reach over to grab the door handle and bring it with you. So the door handle has just been ripped off. I thought I'd just gone like Hulk mode and ripped it off by accident, but I think obviously it's a long standing problem. So we're probably gonna need to get like a new don't know which part of that that is actually. Might have to get a whole new door card thinking about it, but I'm not sure. Secondly then, once I thought, right, okay, well I'm gonna have to pull on, pull on the pocket here just to shut the door. I thought, okay, well at least I'm in now. Now I'll get out, but I won't. And in fact, the only way to get out is to turn the ignition on and wind the window down and then reach out. Open it from the outside, make sure you don't turn the key off now too eager because then it won't let you put the window back up which you're going to want to do because otherwise the car's going to fill up with water while you, you know so yeah we're going to also need to figure out the door handly thing on that so that's annoying and it hurt me like not emotionally physically when i pulled it off and uh yeah just uh ripped off in my hand i can't remember if i hit myself with it or what but i know my fingers hurt so i cried a little uh, have we got anything in our... Oh yeah, we have. We've got uh, a GPS antenna, which looks distinctly not German, and very Chinese. Now, did they have an aftermarket head unit in here? Because it's... This is a Volkswagen one, and it all looks very much as it should be. Um, does this have nav? Is... Yeah, it does. So... Is that an updated satellite receiver for a, I don't know. Someone in the comments will be able to tell us whether that is a genuine Volkswagen thing. You wouldn't imagine it to be, would you, on a coil of cable like that? It just doesn't seem right. Anyway, we have got our automatic gearbox. We've got a broken wing mirror selector switch, much like the one that was in the, uh, what was that car? The Chrysler Crossfire like a stabby bit of glass looking thing. 
we've got our ratio controller here. So we've got high, auto diff, low, and I guess that would be lock, locked four wheel drive. We've got heated seats, cruise control. Um, it is actually just pretty much the same as a Phaeton dash. Now we look at it, all these dials everywhere and whatever. And I think the guys were looking at some technical information for this. And they said they couldn't really find much and it all referred to Phaeton. So that's interesting. Um, I suppose we better look in the boot before we pop the bonnet. We'll see what's going on in the boot. As you expect, pretty big. That's where we'll find out if we've got that spare wheel in here. Oh, okay. Well, definitely haven't swapped it around because I've got one of these little pancake wheel things. Um, but our jacket and everything is all here. Does it look wet in there? No, I don't think so. So that's good. Is there anything in our side pocket? Another triangle thing. We have one of those under the seat. We've got a tyre pump thing. Have we got our... We have actually still got our first aid kit. Now, is the six disc changer got any discs in it for a start? No. And I don't suppose that's for our TVs. We should try and turn the TVs on in a minute. We've still got our powerful shelf though. So that is a Brucey bonus because that would be expensive to buy. Yeah, not too bad at all. So let's pop the bonnet and have a look at this three litre V6 turbo diesel engine. Oh God. I was being attacked by spiders then because it's very cobwebby. There it is, looking very dusty with a half broken off Volkswagen badge. Um, be interesting to get this running in a minute with the bonnet open because it is making some weird noises. If you ask me, anyway, let's check the oil cap, which looks very dirty. Okay, looks all right. Uh, it's quite. Quite black oil, although someone did tell me it had been serviced quite recently. But then again, it is a diesel, so you know that doesn't really mean much. Let me check our coolant. Right, what can we see in there? Mm, not much. Let's get a light on the scene. Looks like the coolant might be a little bit lower. I don't know if you can see that. We've got our minimum and maximum thing in there. The water isn't reaching the minimum. I don't remember there being any warning lights in here, so maybe... I suppose it's not really dumb, so maybe that's meant to be on the minimum when it's hot. But you wouldn't be able to tell that, would you? Because you'd open it and it would explode at you. So be careful doing that. I don't recommend that. Might have to check the uh, coolant level. Maybe we'll do a little service on this. I don't know. So yeah, we'll benefit from a wash under here. Before we fire it up, let's have a look at the service history. I believe it's meant to be in the glove box. Okay, yeah, here we are. So we've got some MOT slips, service book here. Let's find out how many stamps we got, considering it's on 150,000 miles. It's pretty good. Very good, actually. What have we got? Would that be a... F was this one service? or two, so it's one service. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Just done 149. So yeah, just done about a thousand miles ago. Uh, literally, what are we in? Yeah, about, well, not even a month ago, really. So just been done. Supposedly, at least. I guess, you know, the oil wasn't that dirty. Um, so that's good news. We have got good service history. So as long as it drives all right, it shouldn't really put you off this being slightly higher mileage. Although, is it higher mileage? Because what is it? It's 2007. That makes it... Uh, just give me a second while I calculate. Um, 17 years old? Is that right? Yeah, 17 years old. So um, you'd expect it to have done. I think the seagulls are just laughing at my <laughs> mental arithmetic skills. Um, yeah, 17 years old. So you'd expect it to have done, you know, 10 to 12,000 miles every year. So really, I mean, technically, low mileage, isn't it? Low mileage for the age. Let's fire it up before we take it out for a spin. I want you to hear this noise that I'm talking about.
Is it going to make it now or is it more of a gearbox noise? I can't really hear it. So there's a bit of like a, a chuffing noise as if it could be a belt or something. Doesn't sound too bad now, but I think when we get it out on the road, you will probably hear what I'm talking about. Oh, it does smell a bit acrid, diesely smoke as well. Right, just before I do take this out on the road, though, I want to do a quick vehicle score because I want to find out or remind myself exactly what the MIT history is saying. So, if you haven't heard me talk about vehicle score before, then you obviously haven't watched many of my videos. They are the free vehicle check. That would give you a score on your car from 1 to 999 based on its MT history, age, mileage, and many other factors. Gives you a good idea on, you know, how well a car's been looked after, perhaps. Our score's 414 out of 999. They say that's pretty average. It's got a 75% MOT pass rate. We can find out our performance. How much does one of these produce? It's got to be 240 horsepower, isn't it? Oh, 221 brake horsepower. Not too bad. Not to 60 in 9.2 seconds. Oh my god. 12 months tax on this. No wonder they wanted to swap out. 735 pounds that is obscene right that's not going to help us sell it that's for sure so the vehicle mt history that's what we want to have a look at the last one it passed 139 ish thousand miles near side front lower suspension arm off side front lower suspension arm but that was it prior to that it had failed what else an upper suspension arm so they changed literally just the failures but nothing else so we might have to do a few bits on it, and obviously we're going to have to sort out that door handle and the latch and all that sort of stuff, but assuming it drives okay, and maybe figure out what that kind of scuffy noise is that we'll find out in a minute, we might have to sort a few bits out. Don't forget though, if you are going to hand over your hard-earned cash for a car, whether it be privately or from a garage, you need to do a history check and vehicle score have got you covered. You can do their salvage report for £2.97. The ultimate report is just £8.97, and the ultimate report plus is £11.97. It's the same as the ultimate report, but you get £10,000 worth of Xperia data guarantee, meaning that if something shows up with that car that wasn't on the report, you are going to have some cover, and it's always nice to have some cover. That's £11.97, but don't forget, you can use my code SHIFTINGMETAL20. You will get 20% off, making that just £9.58. Less than a tenner, you can spend that on a couple of coffees, and it guarantees your safety when it comes to spending thousands and thousands on a car. I highly recommend you do it. Right then, here we go. Can you hear that? I'll tell you what I really don't like is how low the indicator stalk is on this. It feels like it's like at the bottom of the steering wheel. I'm sure you must be able to hear that. I'm gonna put my microphone closer and just accelerate again, but what is that noise? Is it maybe a ejector or something? I mean, to me, it sounds like a belt that's slipping, skipping, or I don't know. It's very hard to say what it is, but it is off-putting. It's stopping me from even thinking about how else the rest of this car drives, to be honest, because it's just I'm trying to figure out what on earth is that noise. That aside, if you can try and ignore it, it does drive pretty well, to be honest. It's actually not in bad condition in here at all. Even the Yankee Candle air freshener, which I've now taken out. Oh, it's not even that. Is it my Octane Finance one? Yeah, Octane Finance for the win, to be honest. All you other finance providers need to up your air freshener game. Yeah, it's a nice, pleasant place to be. The heated seats work well. I haven't noticed any weird steering noises or suspension noises. It picks up pretty well. I mean, very well for how big it is. Started making some other kind of whirring noise. I don't know if you're gonna hit this at wind noise or... It's almost like a buzzing noise over here. It's a problem when you get into this, what would have been a very premium car. It's basically an Audi Q7, isn't it? And when it gets to this sort of age and you've picked it up for a couple of thousand pounds, there's a lot of things that are likely to go wrong. And you can easily just throw away any potential profit you have by trying to make it perfect. It's, it's never going to be perfect ever again now, unless, you know, you were just wanting to 
waste money. It would be quicker to set fire to a pile of cash than to get this perfect, to be honest. But uh, can we get it to a, a point that makes it, you know, a sensible investment? I think it's all going to depend on what's going on with that noise. If they say that it's just some kind of pulley in it, you know, can be sorted quite easily, then great. Because it's got good tyres, it's got whatever else. Yes, it's going to need an MOT. Even going full lock of the steering wheel, it's not really making any groaning noises. I suppose we better let the Porsche Taycan go. I'm hoping that's just an auxiliary belt or something. Strange that it didn't really do it when it was just revving up, you know, like stationary. What happens if we put it into neutral? Yeah, so now you rev it up and it doesn't make a weird noise. So... Back into gear and it does. So is that a gearbox problem? Is it a drive shaft problem or something? I mean, obviously I hear it and I want to get it fixed. Someone else buying it might be quite happy to just ignore that. I certainly wouldn't. I want to know what the hell it is. Two and a half thousand RPM. You can hear it. I'm hoping you can hear it, quite obviously. And if I rev the engine up to two and a... Like, it's quiet as a... I was going to say whistle, but that doesn't make sense. Quiet as a mouse. Hmm. Well, we're definitely going to clean it. We're definitely going to send it for an MOT, because obviously a weird noise isn't going to come up on an MOT anyway. Uh, this car's going to be worth a lot more with an MOT. As we know, it's got quite a short one. It sounds like a cow. I think it's just because it's windy out here. We can hear it blowing through the window seal, maybe. Very interesting. So I'll leave it there and I'll catch up with you once we've cleaned this and it's had an MOT and we've got it in the workshop and we're trying to figure out what that weird noise is. I'll see you then. Right then, gang, back in the cheap Volkswagen Touareg. Was it cheap? Don't know. I think it was, really. We've got a fresh MOT. It's been cleaned. That's about as far as it goes, really. But it is looking 100 times better. Even the wheels, I gave them a quick little spray over with some plastic dip. That seems to be my new quick kind of bodgy repairs for wheels that have been sprayed black because it... It builds up really quickly and it kind of blends in quite nicely. So a little spray of that around the wheels is looking better. Massive shout out to Macaulay who fixed our door handle. I was going to get another one. Uh, it was only about 15, 16 quid, something like that, from China. It's about the only place you could seem to get them. Uh, but it was, I don't know, like a couple of weeks to wait for one. So Macaulay MacGyvered it and put some screws in it, glued it together. And we now have one rigid door handle again. We also lucked out as well. We took the door card off and found out that the door opening mechanism, the only reason it wouldn't open from the inside was because the Bowden cable had come off. He reattached that, and we've now got one fully functioning driver's door again, which was brilliant because we're then able to send it for an MOT, which it passed with almost flying colors. It just had an advisory for, excuse me, reading while I drive, for front brake discs, uh, worn but not excessively. I think that's probably just a bit of surface corrosion from where I've been sat around for a week because it doesn't take long for the kind of rust to build up on them. Um, but either way, not excessive. The discs seem fine. It dries fine, so uh, we're not getting any more involved with that really. One thing we haven't rectified is that weird noise. I don't know if you can hear it. Sound like a fan or a you know, belt or something. 
making a noise. I assumed it, well, I didn't know because I think when I was driving it before that it would only do it when you're in gear. It wouldn't do it as you, if you just put it into neutral and revved it up. So I assumed it wouldn't be turbo, wouldn't be engine. It must be gearbox related because it only happens when it was in gear. But Adrian's had to look it over, um, had to look it over. Adrian has looked it over. Uh, he's an ex Volkswagen heritage mechanic. And uh, he seems to think that it's something to do with turbo and or boost leak. Um, not something that's going to be easily fixed, but also not something that's really affecting it in terms of performance. It's driving absolutely spot on. Uh, to use an overly used phrase, it pulls like a train. Um, no smoke. If there's a big boost leak, you'd expect to see black smoke coming at the back. We haven't got any of that. As it is a bit of a minor noise, really, I was just, you know, I'm being picky and I'm trying to hear things and point them out that I think we're just going to leave it as is and... You know, it's gonna get sold off cheaply anyway. So if it goes and two months down the line, turbo plays up, we're gonna to have to replace it. But no sense doing it right now, I don't think, not on a cheap car like this. So I spent 2,000 pounds on the car, spent 55 pounds on an MOT. And other than that, it was just the valet. So if you set the labor and you rounded it up, said it cost you 2,100 pounds. I think if Sophie puts this on Facebook Marketplace for three grand, her phone is gonna melt. So, Worst case scenario, I think a £900 profit in this. And, you know, knowing Sophie, she'll probably put it up for more and she'll probably get it because it does look quite quite a nice motor now. And it is, you know, heated leather. Um, it's a big, powerful 4x4. The tax isn't going to help it because I imagine it's 695 quid. But, you know, people do love these and I do think it looks smart, especially now we're giving it a sort of very basic tidy up. So I'm hoping we'll do okay out of it. I'm just driving it out to the farm. It can live out there until Sophie finds someone to buy it. I'll get a few pictures for her as well. Yeah, it will be ready to make someone very happy. I can't remember what I said actually about service history. I don't think we had any, did we? So I was gonna potentially do a service. I haven't, I have to be honest, I haven't done one. So that is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it if you have. Please make sure you hit the thumbs up button. It'll really help me out. I much appreciate it. If you haven't already, subscribe. Not only will it help me out massively, but I'm also giving away a £2,000 tag for your watch. As soon as we hit 75,000 subscribers, I'm giving it away at random. So you could be in with a chance to win. And if you'd like more chances to win cool things, check out my new website, feelgoodcompetitions.com, where there are several competitions running currently. Cars, cash, watches, all of which are great odds and we'll be supporting charities and great causes as well. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.